the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because something is about to break open in your life. The day for rain has come. And like mighty showers, our lives are being flooded. restoration come to you grace is given to you at this hour hallelujah you are rising the strength of god in the ability of god and in the grace of god one of the most enduring laws of life is the law of seed time and harvest when god sets the niche the world in motion he put in this law so as to reward every effort that man puts into this world. In this series of messages that Reverend Dr. F.A. Obuke will be doing, he's going to be talking on the laws of harvest. And I want to tell you that this is the best time of your life. All those of you watching us online, I want to welcome you to Glory Pavilion Church online service here in Benin City, Nigeria. In this church, Reverend Dr. Efe Oboke always brings God's word that is able to give you God's promises. I'd like you right now to call your friends, call your family members, get your acts together, and be ready for an awesome time of worship in God's presence. Before we do so, I'd like us to just bow our heads as we pray and ask that the power of God will fill this atmosphere, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, that God's word will reach out to you now. I pray this morning that every seed that you have sown in righteousness will bring forth harvest to you now as you open your heart and connect with God's servant the power to produce will be better than you father will thank you take absolute control of every single era as we come here to worship in your power let our lives reflect the glory of your word I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And with joy to Jesus, I like us to make welcome right now the amazing Numa Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet as we give God praise this morning. Hallelujah.
Hello there. It's a joy again to be here to share God's word with you today. I'm so excited about this season we're in because I can feel that God is set to do something amazing in your life. So get ready for this season. He's putting a smile on your face. As we look at his word today, we're going to look at the beginning of a series of messages on the laws of harvest. It's such a core message that we need to grasp and understand for us to walk in the place that God has actually destined for us. So we're going to begin that study today, the laws of harvest, and I'll be sharing with you the things that God has put in my heart concerning this. Now, um, I remember uh, very vividly, many years ago, I had the opportunity of going to preach in uh, South Africa. It was uh, a, a, a trip I really anticipated because I felt that God would be doing a lot of good things. He's going to bring healing, He's going to bring blessing, He's going to reveal His glory. So I was very eager to go on that trip to preach in that place. My first visit there. Now, I remember this day, you know, on that visit, I'd gone out with uh, my host, and uh, while we were about to, to go across the road, I remember I, I looked at uh, the traffic, and I saw that the road was quite clear, and I felt, well, I can just go across the road. And then he pulled me back because a car came speeding just down the road. And it was then I realized that in South Africa, they drive on the left-hand side. And I wasn't used to that. I was coming from a place where we drove on the right-hand side. So you see, even though I'd gone there for a noble cause, because I didn't understand my environment, what prevailed in my environment, I became endangered. I could have had that day a very terrible accident. Thank God my friend was there and it was a lot. He pulled me back and because of that, God used him to rescue me. So I just illustrated that because I want to show you that, look, our environment is something that we need to understand. Our world is governed by laws, it's governed by principles. And we need to understand that one of the reasons why many are casualties is because we have failed to really understand our environment the laws that govern our environment. And when we don't know them, then we we'll become endangered as well. There are natural laws, there are spiritual laws, and all these things are operational in our environment. Laws are not emotional. Laws always work the same way. So they can work for you or they can work against you. So we're going to look at the laws of harvest. And um, let me take uh, a reference scripture. We look at the book of uh, Genesis chapter 8. As we consider this subject, verse 22, look at what it says. It says, while this earth remaineth, while this earth remains, we're in this world, we're in this earth, and as long as it is this earth, it says, it says, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. That's what it says. This is a decree. It's a parent law of this earth. You can't run for, as long as it has to do with this world, this is the parent law that governs it. It says that as long as this earth remains, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. There will be day and there will be night. There will be winter, there will be summer. All of these things are decreed. They are principles and they are laws that govern our physical world. So we need to understand how that plays into our lives and how we can walk with these laws so that we cannot, we can live not as victims, but we can walk them. You see, with laws like that, you can have them aid you or you can put yourself in a place where they can begin to work against you. But the law of seed time and harvest is the parent law of this earth. Everything functions according to seed time and harvest. Everything in this world, everything on this earth, functions by seed time and by harvest. And you can't run from that. The reason why you have wages at the end of the month is because of the input you made. So when we're talking about seed time and harvest, they may be described in different ways. It may be effort and reward, for example. It's all the same law, the same principle that is at work, and it governs this world. So any person that will walk in victory and come to a place where he's going to um, walk in the blessings of God and not be a casualty, 
that person must study very carefully this parent law and how it affects our world today. Now, um, in, in the scriptures, if you look at the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 30, if you look at verse 24 and look at verse 27, the Bible talks about a little creature, it's, uh, the, the locust in that uh, text in Proverbs 30. And the Bible describes the locust as wise, as walking in wisdom. Even though it's a small creature hated by many, but the Bible says that it is exceedingly wise. And as I studied the locust, I found out that it is phenomenal. You see, the locust has been, I mean, it, it, it's a, uh, uh, an insect that has terrified whole nations because a lot of money is spent every year trying to mitigate the effects of this little creature, this insect. Now, one of the features of the locust is that it's able to travel at speed that is amazing. And not only that, it's been shown to, uh, to travel across several uh, uh, miles when even larger birds, stronger than it, are not able to cope with that. So how is this little creature ab able to do that? I tell you very simply, it's a creature that's come to understand the events around the, the environment in which it's functioning. What the locust does basically is that it's able to study the uh, wind currents of the earth. And what it does is that they keep feeding and getting strong. And when the wind currents of the earth are in motion, they simply jump into that wind. So the wind propels them. And they've been known to move all the way from West Africa, for example, all the way to the Bahamas, long distance. And that is because of the wisdom that they exhibit. So the locust, we're told, is such a creature that has walked in wisdom. And it's done that, accompanied a lot of feet just by understanding the prevailing environment, the world that it is living in. It's an insect despise that people hate so much but it's been able to survive because it has learned how to use what obtains in its environment to further its ambition and cause. And that is what we must learn. We must learn how to understand our environment, the laws that govern our world, so that we can use them to aid our efforts in life. So what we have read in the book of Genesis says that as long as this earth remains, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. So seed time and harvest are things that have come to stay. They govern this particular world that we're living in. So we're going to look at all of that. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered that Jesus, one of the things he did was that he kept teaching about the kingdom of God. He was eager to unfold the nature of the kingdom of God, how it functions, what it is, so that it is no longer a mystery to us. Jesus was intent that we understood how the kingdom of God functions, what it is, and how to have it work in our lives. The kingdom of God is the power of God, and we need to understand it. So Jesus kept teaching about it. Now, this is where I'm going. Have you ever wondered that a lot of the times when he's talking about the kingdom, he always taught using seed and harvest. He kept using seed and harvest to teach how the kingdom works. Yes, because the principle that governs the activity of the kingdom of God is seed time and harvest. So we need to understand it. We need to work it into our lives. Oh, yes, indeed. So we want to examine this a bit critically today. Now, like I said, this whole earth, has been placed under the law of seed time and harvest. Everything in life revolves around this. If somebody's ill, for example, and goes to the doctor, what do they do? They tell the person, take this medication. Take it so number of times, so you have to be accurate with the kind of effort you are putting in. And then it's when you do that, that you come out saying, oh yes, I feel better now. So that again, is revolving around seed time and harvest. If you see a student who has made an A, in his and distinction in his courses, you'll find that, that before the A's and all the distinction, that student has had to go to lectures, has had to go uh, make effort at reading, going to use the library and all of that. So there's always effort before the reward. You have your wages coming after your effort at work. So it's always about seed time and then you have the harvest. 
everything follows in that order. And I believe very strongly in my heart that when we don't understand this, then we keep having the difficulties that we have. This entire earth is regulated by seed time and then by harvest. Now, when God instituted that particular law, there were events that led to that. I want to examine those events a little bit today. Because like I said, it's the parent law that governs this entire universe that we're in. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 6. And I want us to look at the events that preceded God's proclamation that this earth, as long as it remains, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. So Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 says, And it says, It came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of this earth, look at that, and daughters were born to them. Look at this, verse 2. It says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So these are not human beings. These are some kind of fallen angels that began to look into the realm of men. And Bible said they saw that the daughters of men were fair or beautiful. And Bible says they took them wives of all that they chose. And then the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that is also his flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years, he says. Now look at this. The next verse says, that's verse 4. It says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. The same became mighty men that were of old, men of renown. And God saw this. Verse 5, God saw that the wickedness of man was great. There's a lot of evil in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he grieved the Lord. Bible says he repented the Lord that he had made man on this earth. And he grieved his heart. Look at verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. So here God begins to regret because as man, as man began to multiply on this earth, wickedness also began to grow and all of that. And it was an invasion from the realm of the spirit by angelic beings that had fallen and they began to intermarry with man. The intent of this was to transmit wickedness into the human race and to destroy the possibility of Jesus ever coming. Because God had spoken that the seed of the woman is going to come. And through the seed of the woman, that deliverance will come back to humanity again. So the devil was bent that man must be polluted and destroyed. And so a lot of wickedness was infused into humanity. The heart of man became depraved. Wickedness abound. All manner of evil became the normal stay of humanity at that point in time. And Babu says when God began to look at these events, his heart was grieved and he said it pained him that he had made man. And he now took a decision, I'm going to destroy man. These are the events that led to the flood of Noah, where God wiped out the entire humanity and the living creatures that were on this earth. And God had to do that to remove the pollution that had taken place. So these were the events that were preceding what we are going to read next. Now, if we go over to um, chapter, chapter 8 of uh, of. Of Genesis. Now we'll see what has happened here. Because of wickedness, God decided to judge the world and destroy the earth as it was at that time. Now, in chapter 8, if we go down and read from verse 20 now, at this point in time, uh, God had judged the world, everybody had gone dead, and only Noah and his family survived that. And so we're looking at the events that now follows that. Now, in verse 20, it says. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So after everything was over, Noah came out, and the first thing he did was to offer sacrifice to God. And what happens following that? The Bible says in verse 21, And the Lord smelt a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. 
for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. And he now says, while this earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So what is going on here? God had judged the wickedness in this world by destroying humanity and every living creature. But Noah offered a sacrifice to God and God says, I will no longer do this again. Now, does that mean that God is not ready to accept wickedness and allow evil to thrive? Because he did what he did because he hates evil and wickedness. So if God says, I will no longer destroy man this way again, does that mean that God is saying that, okay, I'm going to let wickedness abound? Is that what God is saying here? The answer is no. What God is saying here is that I'm instituting another order. I'm bringing now a parent law, the law of seed time and then harvest. Seed time and harvest, henceforth, we regulate humanity. And that is why on this earth, God does not need to judge the world again and destroy everybody. There's a law already in place, the law of seed time and harvest. It will judge every person. If you don't sow, then you will not reap. If you sow evil, then you will reap evil. If you do what is good, then good will come your way. So the law, because what governs humanity and governs every effort, every individual is judged by this law. If you do what is right, then you will see good come your way. If you do that which is evil, the evil is surely coming your way someday. And that is what God has put in place. That is why we must understand the laws of harvest. A lot of things that are coming into our lives, they are coming because of harvest. I've seen children struggle, struggle, having a lot of burdens in their lives because of the seeds that their fathers have sown. A lot of the destruction we see in our world today, they are coming from the kind of seeds that people are sowing. And so as we begin to understand the laws of harvest, we will know how to walk free from all of these things and know how to put them in place to serve God's purpose in our lives. I want to tell you and share with you an experience I had several years ago as a little boy then. Uh, back in Africa where I lived at that time, I remember, you know, my dad took me as a little boy and says, let's go to our village where I grew up from. And uh, it's my first recollection of that place where my family came from. And I, I, I was in the car that day when uh, we drove into that village. And as we drove into the village, uh, my dad, uh, in excitement, you know, uh, saw somebody ahead of him and he said, oh, you know, that's somebody I need to talk to. And then he pulled, uh, pulled up beside that person and they began to talk and all of that. I was a little boy then. I, didn't, I mean, I wasn't concerned about what we were talking about. But when the man left, my dad turned to me and he said this. He said, that man I've talked with, he was my classmate. We're in elementary school together in this particular village. We're here together. And he said to me, he said, this man never left this village. And you see that bicycle that he has, that is all he's been able to attain in life. And he began to talk with me about that. And as I listened to my dad, he began to dawn on me that how come my dad and that man, they were both classmates. And over the years, that man has not transitioned into any success. My dad moved on to have his PhD and he became a college professor. And he began to share with me, he said, when we were in this village together, I had no means. Nobody was there to help me. But I made up my mind that I was going to leave this place and become somebody important. And so I began to work hard. I would take uh, produce from my father's farms and I would ride several kilometers to go sell those produce. That was I was going to pay my way through edu uh, my, my education and began to go out to, to other levels of education. He began to share with me what he had to do. Now, the other person probably resigned and said, well, nobody's there to help me. I don't have any means of going back to school. And he remained in that place, hoping that someday God will come through. You see, he refused to sow the right seeds that he should have sowed. And this is the lot of many. You can use the law of seed time and harvest to change your life. My dad put in effort and he left that village. He became promoted and became somebody that made a lot of impact. I'd like you to know that the law of seed time and harvest is real. Let me show you an experience in the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Genesis again. I want to look at chapter 4 and uh, 
uh, I want to, you to look at this story carefully. This is a story of two brothers born from the same parents. And I want to look at their lives and show you the events of their lives. They were taught by their father to worship God. And both of them came together to worship God. And so, in chapter 4 of Genesis, the Bible says, in verse 6, it says, And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you wroth? And why is your countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at your door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt and he shall rule over and you shall thou shalt rule over him. He says here, you see, Cain and Abel had both brought offerings to God. But you see, Abel got the appropriate offering that will move the heart of God. So God accepted this offering. But you see, Cain refused to understand that what you sow is critical. He just brought whatever he liked to God. And at that time, God refused to accept that because it was not an accurate seed. And so he became wroth. He became envious. He began to hate his brother and ultimately murdered his brother out of envy and jealousy. And God spoke to him and said, why are you in this state? If you do well, you will get the same result. If you sow the right seed, you will get the right result. Life is about seeds and about harvest. Many are bitter and angry with people because they feel that somebody is supposed to be there to help them, not taking responsibility for their lives. They blame everybody but themselves. People of God, the seeds you sow will change your life. It is the parent law of the earth. As long as this earth remains, he says, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. We can have this rule work against us or we can have this rule work for us. It's simple. Anything you want to change in your life, look for the appropriate seed and sow that seed and you will discover that it will bring change your way because it's the law. In the seed time, there will be harvest. There will be harvest. There will be harvest. I want to see God change your life. What are the things that you desire? What are the things you are seeking for? What do you want God to do for you today? I'd like you to know that God has put a law. If you walk that law, you can change the events of your life. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to know that revelation opens the way for us. You shall know the truth, and the truth you know will set you free. At this time, I want to pray for you right now, because God is initiating a process of change. Set your heart. What are the things you must begin to do now to address the areas of challenges in your life? The areas you want to see changes? Why don't you begin to look for the right seeds to sow in those areas? And the Lord will bless you. Father God, I break every yoke that has restricted your people in the name of Jesus. The fountains of life, I command them to flow in you again. Oh God, let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Lord, fill your people, oh God, with insight and wisdom, oh God. Help them to know how to navigate the terrain. This world we're living in, Father. And let your blessings come as a rain. And let them come into their place of greatness and impact. I release this favor to you today. In that mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed. You are lifted and positioned in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, get ready to reign. We'll keep talking about the seed time and harvest and the laws of harvest. And I tell you, God is opening amazing doors in this season. Well, at this time, if you've paid your tithe, you've given an offering, it's a means of worshiping God. It's a seed as well. And God will honor it. So in this moment, I join my faith with you for a divine process and a miracle in your life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak of God, fresh visitation from you, Father. Let the heavens give rain to your people, Father. I bless your life. I bless that which you pursue, the work of your hands. I rebuke evil from you. I, pre I, I speak preservation over you and your family and all that pertains to you. In the name of Jesus. Keep walking in victory and keep reigning in Him. Remember, see time and harvest is the parent law of this earth. We are blessed in Jesus' name. Suddenly, suddenly, I will look just like you. Just like you, Jesus. I'm changing to the name that I see. <laughs> Oh, God. Jesus. 